Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and you've made it to the very last week of our free Christmas time quilt along. This is last week's block. This week, we're gonna focus on putting the quilt top together, and for the backing, you can either use one yard of one fabric, or you can follow our free pattern and use your leftover layer cake squares for a piece backing. We also have a matching cross stitch because the more, the merrier. We're on week five. This has been so much fun, and this finishing is so easy, and we're gonna just work with it on the table, and I'm gonna give you some tips on adding long sashings and borders. So we're gonna start with step one. This is week one, week two, week three, and week four. And I have everything cut and on my design board and labeled, so I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it out like we have it. And we're gonna do the first part with the fabric C sashings first. And these fabric C's are gonna go right here. So what I'm going to do is pin. And I think when you're sewing and you don't pin, that is where you're gonna get your inaccurate results. So I'm gonna put that on there. When I sew it, I'm gonna sew with a quarter inch seam, then use my quick press seam roller and then pin this to the top. So I'm gonna leave those together. So if you just sewed and didn't pin, you would be off just a tiny bit. And so pinning is gonna make everything really nice because you need it to be the same size here. If you just sewed it on, then it's not gonna meet up when it gets to the next piece, which is why pinning is so important. And I'll put this together and we'll go to the sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch seam. So here we want to press toward our sashing. So I'm going to set my seam, press, set my other seam, and right here, you can see I twisted my seam. I'm going to see if you can see that on the front, if it looks funny on the front, and if it doesn't look funny on the front, then I'll leave it. So I have that one done. We'll do the same thing on the second one. Now when you look at your pattern, fabrics A and fabric B, that is your sashing and your borders, and they're all gonna be 23 and a half inch wide. And on those long strips, I cut them, and I don't trim them down. What I do is mark them at zero and 23 and a half, and we'll cut them off at the end. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, and that is how I do all of my borders. I never cut them down, because if you do that, it's going to be wavy. So I've marked it at the zero and the 23 and a half. Then I'm gonna mark the centers. And this one is my sashing, but my borders come out the same size. So I'm gonna do those all at the same time. And you can cut this off just so it's not so long, but I want to be able to trim right next to these pins. So I'll just do all four of these at one time. And this is the only time I use my mat. For measurements, I never cut blocks using the mat. So I'm not gonna need this, we'll just chop that off. And I'm gonna just do all four at one time. And that's, that's what makes this quilt so easy, is you can combine multiple steps. And you can do this one by one if you want, you can do it however you like. I just never cut my borders to the exact length because I want to have a perfectly square quilt and I'm gonna show you how to do that at the end. And this just adds a little bit of time to the process, but I think that it's really worth it. It took me a couple years to come up with this, and I never do a quilt any different way. So I will set these aside since these are my outer borders. 
I'm going to put this sideways just so you can see what I'm really doing. So this is the top left, bottom right, and this one, I'm gonna fold it in half to find the half mark. Match my pins for the center, pin here. So because this has no seams, it's a little bit wavy, but you want your quilt to be accurate. So what you do here, pull and pin. And this one, what I'm going to do is sew, and then I am gonna come back and pin this one on the table so that it's nice and flat. I don't wanna pin this one at the sewing machine because it will come out wavy. And when I sew this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a quarter inch away from this edge, sew on to the sashing, back stitch. Stitch a quarter inch down, stitch a quarter inch past, and then back stitch so it's nice and secure and then we're going to come and iron this before we add it to the next side. So from here, definitely set your seam. If you don't set your seam when you're adding borders, when you press them, they 100% will be wavy. From time to time, you can try it and you'll see the difference. So set my seam, finger press to one side, put the iron right on that seam, the edge of that iron right on that seam. If you start moving your iron a bunch, it will stretch your fabric. So from here, I'm going to trim. Now that I've got it attached to one side and you can see I've got it aligned perfectly here and cut that off. And I'm doing the same thing where I've got it aligned here and here now I'm gonna find the center of that seam, which is right here. Find the center of this. Line those up, pin here, pin at each end and then pin throughout. And like I said, I like to pin with the seams down and sew with the seams down. And you just wanna make sure when you're sewing this, you don't sew where like this goes in or goes out, cause then it's gonna be definitely wavy. So I like to use lots and lots of pins. And again, when I sew this, I am going to backstitch at the beginning and the end. And that is because I'm getting towards the end and wherever I think the seams might get pulled, that's where I'm going to backstitch. Most people do not do that. I also backstitch when adding the borders. Most people also do not do that. So from here, I'm gonna set this seam and do the same ironing technique. Now we're going to attach our side borders first. So I'm gonna find the center on both sides, put a pin. And this is how I do really large quilts also. So I do the same technique with large and small quilts. Then I'm gonna match my centers, pin the very left and the very right, right where the pins are. So you want that pin to touch the end. And then here, you see it's a little wavy. What I'm going to do is pull and then just add some pins. And this is the way you can get your borders on your quilt so they're not wavy. I know if you send a quilt to a long arm quilter and the, the quilt is wavy, it's going to stretch and then your corners of your quilt are gonna be not at an exact square on the edge. They'll be more wavy. I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and again, back stitch at the beginning and the end of each seam. Okay, 
So just for an example, I'm gonna show you if you don't set your seam, how your border is going to look. I'm gonna do the same technique I did with the sashing where I line up a line on my ruler and cut all four intersections. And now we're gonna add our top and bottom. So we're gonna do the same exact thing. So you want the edge of your quilt to always be 90 degrees. So I have lined up my ruler on both sides and I'm gonna trim the entire corner and that's gonna give you a perfect border before you send it to your long arm quilter or before you quilt it yourself. And you will always be trimming some off, but it's good to do about six inches on each side. And if you had attached your border and not trimmed it down after, I guarantee this would be wavy. So here is how my quilt looks when it's totally done. And just pay attention to how straight those borders are. And just so you know, because it's backstitched right here, it's not gonna pull apart because those are gonna be, your outside seams are gonna get the most pull in them once it's quilted. Thanks for joining me for our Christmas time mystery quilt along. I hope you've loved making this quilt. We've definitely enjoyed seeing all of your progress pictures on social media. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and I'll see you next time.